Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, uh, we're going to talk about the USS Lucid, which we are on board. She is the centerpiece of the Stockton Maritime Museum in Stockton, California. And uh, they're in the process of restoring her to fully open her up to the public. Lucid is a minesweeper built in 1955. Perhaps one of the largest advances in naval warfare to come out of World War II was the invention of the magnetic detonator for mines and torpedoes. Obviously, magnetic detonators are set off by ferrous metals, steel, which most ships are made out of in this time period. So, the U.S. Navy, post-World War II, put a lot of effort into designing and building non-magnetic ships. And that is a lot more difficult than you would think. Now, on the surface, simple. You're not building a ship out of steel. Well, we built ships for thousands of years before we came up with steel. Uh, so you start with a wooden hull vessel. So we are down in the bilge in the after engine room on USS Lucid. This is where the four Packard V12 diesel engines would have been that ran the ship's two propellers. So your hull, your keel, your frames, all made out of wood, not magnetic, piece of cake. The problem is these have to be held together somehow. Uh, and they have to be able to survive for the career of the ship with as little maintenance as possible. We're not going to go back to the way we built things hundreds of years ago and uh, do post and lintel and all that wooden drift pins and things like that. Um, so you have to use non-ferrous metals to put these ships together. And you'll notice that we've got a ton of bolts around here that are attaching all of these pieces. These are all made out of things like brass, bronze, manel, stainless steel non-ferrous metals that can hold everything together, they can be machined and put together. Believe it or not, a 600-ton minesweeper costs about the same as a new-built destroyer at the same time. So a ship that's about four times the weight of a minesweeper because they're using so many non-ferrous metals. Uh, so for example, those, those Packard V12 diesels that run these ships, on most ships, those sorts of things are made out of steel. Uh, on a minesweeper, you've got to make it out of aluminum, brass, bronze, like we were talking about. Uh, so you, you've got to make stuff specifically for this class of ship. You can't just take the same normal mild steel watertight door that you're using on other ships. You have to make that out of aluminum or stainless steel. Uh, so suddenly you've got whole new supply chain issues that the ship is becoming more and more expensive. It's worth pointing out that some things you just can't make out of other material. For example, the ship's guns, the small arms on board, uh, those are all still made out of steel, steel gun barrels, things like that. Uh, so they have degaussing equipment wrapped around where they are stored so that these ships wouldn't be magnetic. Another thing that has to be metal is the fuel tanks. So USS Lucid has three of them. Remember, Battleship New Jersey has about a hundred. And uh, these are all made out of bronze. There's the two, uh, port and starboard. We are in the port side one, where they're 3,800 gallons. I'm not, I can't remember what the center line one is, but uh, this is where the ships hold their fuel. A little bit shorter than the ones on New Jersey, too. Uh, these ships are diesel powered and they have sounding tubes coming into them, like this one right here. And they've got a uh, suction pipe to draw the fuel out of them, like this one here. Otherwise, the tank is built into the curve of the hull, so you can see how it sweeps up here. And just like Battleship New Jersey, it needs some interior structural members. Uh, there, there is a deck overhead with a berthing compartment, so you can see that it's got some framing like this one. And going that way, it does continue further outboard, but remember, it curves up with the side of the hull. And then it's got this partition in the middle, separating it from another side tank. 
Even things like the hand tools used on this ship had to be made out of non-magnetic materials as opposed to the regular steel wrenches and things like that that you'll see around the ship. Now, battleships have a small amount of this. For example, in our magazines, we're using brass dogging wrenches or aluminum uh, tools to open the powder canisters. But throughout the rest of the ship, it's the regular off-the-shelf stuff. In fact, uh, there were occasions where our sailors had a certain budget to go to a regular civilian store like Home Depot and just buy what they needed for workshops, which obviously is going to be the regular steel stuff that anybody else can get. During the Korean War, one of our World War II built minesweepers managed to set off a magnetic mine that uh, had been newly manufactured by the Soviets. And that was weird because World War II minesweepers were also made out of wood and had very low magnetic signatures. So uh, the US Navy tasked a group of frogmen to go and recover some of these mines still operable so they could retrofit them and figure out what made them tick. And they found that they were far, far more sensitive than our own mines at that time period. And so that is what precipitated building the MSO class. Uh, and uh, before deploying, these ships would have to run down a magnetic range where things like keys in your pocket might be enough to set off that range. So oftentimes, personal effects like that had to be left in special shelves or lockers that did have degaussing around them, or if you knew you were gonna go out on a mine sweeping mission, you might even leave all that behind at the pier before you deployed. Naturally, using these non-standard building techniques required some innovation. Fortunately, there are a bunch of shipyards at this time in the United States that were still building wooden ships. So places like the shipyards here in Stockton, California, or uh, Higgins factory down in New Orleans are pioneering wooden ship designs even into the 1950s. And so the Navy turns to manufacturers like these to build their minesweepers. As someone who's worked on wooden ships before, like USS Constellation in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, I was really impressed seeing the knees of this ship. They're doing the same thing as they did on Constellation, but on her, you're going to a live oak tree and with a like paper or thin wooden uh, silhouette of the frame you're gonna make and you're putting on the tree and being like, okay, this branch comes out at the right angle. We can cut this exactly to the size it needs to be to go in here. Uh, that is expensive, complicated, requires old growth wood. And when you're building a handful of frigates for your Navy, that's fine. When you're building 101 of these MSO class minesweepers, maybe more complex. So they came up with laminating multiple pieces of oak together instead of finding one piece that you could cut to the right size. So this frame right here, or this knee right here, is made out of 30 pieces of oak that they were able to steam to bend into the right shape, laminate together by gluing multiple layers on, and then they could shape it to how it needed to be to fit through these frames. And then notice it's held in place by brass nut and bolt. So completely non-magnetic, still does the same job as what you would see on the battleship. Another interesting innovation is something we also see on PT boats during World War II. This is a watertight bulkhead separating the forward engineering main space here from the engineer's berthing compartment on the other side of this bulkhead. And for this bulkhead, instead of using horizontal or vertical planks like you would expect, they're strangely diagonal. You can see that here in the video. If we go on the other side of the bulkhead, they're diagonal in the other direction. So to make this bulkhead a rigid structural member of the ship and help uh, keep the ship strong as she's able to be ocean going, this is an ocean going minesweeper, uh, they basically bolted two uh, planks together diagonally to put the ship together. And we've got a couple of examples of planking like this around the ship. You can even see some of it on the hall over here. 
So here you can see the side of the ship. And again, um, we're, we're using the diagonals here. The side thickness is a total of five inches. So you've got two inches of oak here at a diagonal. Then you've got two inches of Douglas fir outside of that. And you've got a one inch layer of oak on the very outside of that that is a harder uh, but also sacrificial layer that you can, that gets damaged. You know, these are wooden ships, they're coming up to the pier and you can just take that piece off and put a new one on. Also here, you can see the hogback. Again, from my time working on Constellation, wooden ships uh, will hog, which is when the ends of the ship bend downwards, causing the center of the ship to bend up. At one point, Constellation had more than 30 inches of hog, i.e. the ends had sagged down 30 inches and the center had pushed up uh, that much. So there was a 30 inch difference between the stem of the ship and the center part. A sag would be the opposite, where the center goes down and the ends come up. But the problem with wooden ships is the center of the ship is very full. It's buoyant. There's a lot of air in there. At the ends, they taper and become narrow. But the problem is a lot of your work you're doing at the ends of the ship. So even for a minesweeper like Lucid, your anchor and windlasses and all that stuff is at the bow. Your minesweeping gear and the booms and, and winches and everything for that are at the stern. So your weight is at the ends of the ship. So that makes those non-buoyant sections want to go down while the buoyant section in the middle is pushing up. So by having planks like this bolted onto the side of the ship, it both gives it enough strength to prevent that sagging, but also allows the hull to flex somewhat. So while we're going through those ocean waves, that allows it to move. The wooden construction of these ships was so successful that not a single one was lost to an enemy mine. The downside, of course, is ships like these were incredibly vulnerable to fire. And here we can see some fire damage from when this ship was privately owned before she was turned into a museum. Fortunately, it wasn't significant and did not threaten this vessel. But the engineering spaces on some of her sister ships, uh, not only being made out of wood, but also having lubricating oil and diesel fuel in them, did catch fire and cause the loss or significant damage of a number of those minesweepers. Minesweepers today in the US Navy, the MCM class that replaced these use significantly more fiberglass than this class. And more modern uh, minesweeping techniques remove manned ships from the equation entirely, favoring either aircraft or more frequently these days, underwater drones. Did you expect in the 1980s when New Jersey is at the end of her career that the Navy would still be making wooden hauled ships? Let us know in the comment section down below if you knew that or not. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support for today's video consider supporting the Stockton Maritime Museum as they continue their efforts to restore USS Lucid so that they can open her to the public. Your donations will help repair damages like these that the ship sustained in private ownership that will allow her to be opened up. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support their ongoing efforts. Remember, they do not receive any funding from the New Jersey Department of State and do not have any paid staff. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.